Hey girls, um, so and anyone else who is watching, um, we're going to pick up where we left off with the little princess. Um, we have, we are reading the little princess coloring book by um, Francis Francis Hudgens Burnett, and this is illustrated by uh, Thea Riros. Now this is the coloring book version, so it's got all these beautiful pictures that you can color in it. I I'm still working on coloring them myself. Um, this is a condensed version of the story, so there's um, uh, there is some details left out. So when you get older, you might read a bigger version of the story. Um, now, uh, where we left off was Sarah. Sarah is living up in the attic. Um, she is very poor now, and she's working as a servant at, at the school instead of. Um, as a pupil because her father died leaving her no money. And so she now feels a lot of ways that she is very alone. There doesn't seem to be anyone really who cares for her besides Ermengarde and Becky, but she rarely gets to see them. One day while she was looking out of her attic window, Another man she saw across the rooftops was looking out of his window, and he had a monkey on his shoulder. But the monkey was a little mischievous. He decided he wanted to meet Sarah. So the monkey jumped off of the man's shoulder and ran across the rooftops and landed on Sarah's shoulder. And Sarah didn't know what to do. She's like, I have to return the monkey to this man, but how am I supposed to do it? She noticed that the man was dressed up in a way of someone from India. So she spoke to the man in Indian. Um, will he let me catch him? The young man, whose name was Ramdas, explained that he was a servant of the gentleman downstairs. The monkey was a good monkey and would not bite, but unfortunately he was difficult to catch. If Mrs. Saib, um, that is... Um, a formal, um, kind of like, um, lady, um, my lady, uh, it's, it's a very, it's a, a formal title, um, in India, I do believe. It's a, basically, he was giving her an honor by, uh, saying that, Mrs. Saib. Um, if Mrs. Saib would permit, uh, Ramdas, he himself could cross the roof to the room and enter the window and regain the little animal. Can you get across? asked Sarah. In a moment, he answered. Then come, she said. He's flying from side to side of the room as if he was frightened. Ramdas slipped through the attic window and crossed to hers. As steadily and lightly as if he had walked on roofs all his life, he slipped through the skylight and dropped down upon his feet without a sound. Then he turned to Sarah and shalomed. Basically, he's bowing. He he would put his hands together and do a little bit of a bow. Um, it's hard to show you, but basically, he ends up in this um, position. Uh, it's a it's a it's a way of greeting as well. The monkey saw him and uttered a little scream. A few minutes, um, however, in a few minutes, however, the monkey sprang, chattering onto Ramdas's shoulder, and sat there clinging to his neck. Ramdas thanked Sarah profoundly. She had seen that he had taken in at a glance all the bare shabbiness of the room. He spoke to her as if he were speaking to the little girl of a Raja. Now, a Raja is like a king over in India. So she was treating her like a princess, even though she was living in such squalor. He did not presume to remain more than a few minutes. He salamed once more and got through the skylight and crossed the slates again. In the kitchen, there was much discussion of the gentleman next door. He was an Englishman who had lived in India. He had met with great misfortunes, which had for a time so imperiled his whole fortune that he had thought himself ruined. The shock had been so great that he had almost died of brain fever. And ever since, he had been shattered in health. Though his fortunes had changed and all his possessions had been restored to them to him. So this sounds like a man who was very similar to Sarah's father, who also lost all of his money. But he seemed to have gotten it back. But he was still doing, uh, he was still very sickly.
The gentleman's name was Mr. Carrisford. He was very much interested when he heard from Ram Dass of the adventures of the monkey on the roof. Ram Dass made for him a very clear picture of the attic and its bare floors, broken plasters, rusty and empty grates, and the hard, narrow bed. And hearing of this little girl made Mr. Crawford think of the daughter of his dead business partner, Captain Crewe. <gasps> Captain Crewe, he knew Sarah's father. He's... He was, he's thinking of Sarah, even though he's talking about the little servant girl. He doesn't know that the little servant girl is Sarah. Do you suppose, he said, that the other child could possibly be reduced to any such conditions as our poor little soul next door? He's wondering if Sarah's, Sarah Crew, whose father died um, a pauper, could have been turned into a servant like this little girl he doesn't know is Sarah. He had been trying to find Captain Crewe's daughter, a girl whose first name and whose school he did not know, so that he might give her her father's half of the wealth finally received from the diamond mines. This was the trouble on his mind. So it looks like Sarah isn't actually poor. Because remember how he said um, he had thought he lost all his money. But it turns out they didn't. And it looks like Sarah's father died before he found out that he did not lose all his money. And this man is looking for Sarah to tell her that she is not poor. But he doesn't know where Sarah is. He doesn't know the little girl that Ramdas is talking about is Sarah. The winter was a wretched one. For several days it had rained continuously. The streets were chilly and sloppy and full of dreary cold mists. There was mud everywhere. Of course, there were several long and tiresome errands to be done. There were always on days like this, and Sarah was sent out again and again until her shabby clothes were damp through, and added to this she had been deprived of her dinner because Miss Minchin had chosen to punish her probably for nothing she did wrong. The muddy water squelched through her broken shoes and the wind seemed tiring, trying to drag her thin jacket from her. And we will end it right there. I know these are a little shorter chapters right now, but that's okay. We're about halfway through the story. We'll see if... Yeah. All right, we will pick up where we left off and see what Sarah sees um, on her uh, trip. To the market. All right. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. All right. See you later.